Hi, this is Art Bergeron, and this is a Bergeron Brief. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today uh, with my friend Rachel Brown uh, is about Social Security. The point of this presentation is, say you're in your 60s and you're trying to figure it out. So when do you want Social Security? How is that all going to work? And, and Rachel, because of the nature of her work, does a ton of this. So I wanted you to hear from an expert. So Rachel, tell me um, where you are, who you work for, how long you've been doing this. Sure. Well, um, my name is Rachel Brown. I am a senior supervising attorney at Community Legal Aid, where I oversee our elder, disability, and Medicare work. Community Legal Aid is a civil legal aid program. We serve low-income and elderly residents of Central and Western Massachusetts. And essentially, we work to assure fairness for all in the justice system, protecting homes, livelihoods, health, and families. Um, most of our services are to people who are low income, but the folks who are 60 and older, we do not have financial restrictions, but we are focusing on those who need assistance the most and might not otherwise be able to afford representation when some sort of basic need is at stake. So, and, and you folks are funded by us, right? We're funded by, you're funded by, it's like your ta our tax dollars at work, right? It, are mm -hmm. helping... Yeah, absolutely. So we receive money from uh, the state of Massachusetts. We have a lot of federal funders as well. Our elder work is provided under the Older Americans Act. Um, we have a lot of community partners who are very generous to us. Um, so we, we certainly appreciate all the assistance that we can get so that we can help the community. So Rachel Brown and her organization are one of the great kind of un, unknown jewels in the community in terms of dealing with so many of these issues. So thank you, Rachel, for taking the time to do this. So so go back to my example. And, and I always talk about my friends, Frank and Mary, they're, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And I always tell people, if you're old enough to get the joke, you're old enough to be my client. So say <laughs> they're Frank and Mary, and they're, you know, they're, they're and, and, and Frank may be still working, right? Uh, and, or, or Mary, you know, and they're, and, and they're trying to figure it out. So they've got, and, you know, wh when do they want to think about social security? How does social security work? And, and just talk about some different scenarios. Absolutely. So most of the time when people think about social security, they're thinking about retirement benefits from the administration. And so in order to receive retirement benefits from the administration, you need to have worked long enough to be able to collect benefits or have a family member who has worked long enough so that you can collect under their record. Most people who want to collect Social Security retirement benefits are going to retire in their full retirement range, which is somewhere between 65 and 67, depending on a person's date of birth. But it is, in fact, possible to get retirement benefits as early as the age of 62 if you're in financial need. Um, but please know that if you take early retirement, those benefits are going to be permanently lower than if you were to wait until your full retirement age. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you can afford to hold off on collecting retirement benefits, your benefit can be increased the longer you wait up until the age of 70. And 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 you, and we're talking about not not in six, insubstantial differences, right? Absolutely. I, I I know I I was one of those who I'm now I turned seventy three in January. I'm getting to be I'm definitely Frank and Mary age, but 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 I um I, I waited until I was seventy, um in order to take the benefits. And I remember the, the you know the difference was I want to say I want it was something like like 4% or like 8% a year. And it was the increase in the, in the yearly, in the, in the monthly payment, you know? It so can it, work out to be hundreds of dollars over the course of a year. So right. it's definitely worth getting that individualized look at whatever is going on with your potential benefit before filing for retirement benefits. And so, you know, how do people kind of go about figuring that out? You know, in, you know, in, in general, of course, we're always weighing out on the one hand, right? If you defer your benefits, then you're not getting the benefits you didn't get yet, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you're losing something there. On the other hand, by deferring them, you're increasing the checks that you're going to be getting once you start, you know? And I, I know, you know, people say, well, you know, I'm never going to, uh, you know, I'm, at, at what point is it more beneficial to wait for that kind of bigger check? Is there, is there a kind of a rule of thumb that you use? Is there, or how do people do it? 
So I do have to say at Community Legal Aid, we're not able to do that evaluation for people of, is this the right time to take this benefit? But the Social Security Administration itself can answer those questions. And it is possible to sign up for what's called a My SSA account so that you can get access to what your benefit would be if you collect now. And then any um, Social Security office should be able to help you figure out if you don't collect now, what your anticipated benefits are if yeah. you were to wait until later on down the line. So, so the, the point is the Social Security people can really help you with this. Absolutely. If you are still working too, yeah. um, it's important to know that the longer you work, the more you're paying into the system. So that can increase your benefits as well. Oh, so 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 now now I'm going to give you it, so does does that continue to occur? Now I'm going to give you a personal question. Does that continue to occur after you have started receiving your benefits? Do, does your does your does that does the number that you're getting continue to increase after your benefits have started? So it can. Um, I don't have the finer details at my fingertips, yeah, yeah, okay. but I will say the one guarantee each year is that there's almost always a cost of living increase. So at the very least, you should be seeing that increase year after year while you collect. And so how do how does it work regarding regarding spouses? Regarding sure. can you just talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Say for example, Mary had worked all her life, but Frank had not worked a lot of his life. It might be possible for him to collect a spousal benefit based on the fact that Mary's benefit is a lot higher than Frank's. Um, Frank could also potentially qualify for benefits if he and Mary had divorced but had been married long enough, or if Mary had passed away and he had no other access to benefits other than being a survivor. So there were a lot of there were a lot of cases in which this just the, you know by virtue of being the spouse you you can collect the benefit and and I it's funny because I just just talked to some folks and you know that uh, you know the the I I was asked about the two social security checks you know and I asked about the wives was like you know seven hundred dollars and the husband was like two thousand dollars and I, I was like that's funny. It, you know, it, it seems to me that you should be pretty cl more close to 50% of what your husband is getting. And, and I think in this case, they had just made a mistake, you know, that they had, that she had started, she's taking her benefit based on her income, which had been very low, as opposed to taking 50% of his, of it, of his, which would have been much higher. And people just have no idea. And another thing that can weigh in there is whether or not one of them had worked um, and received a government pension, because there is an offset if you've done work in the past where you weren't paying into the social security system. Can you talk about that a little bit about the because because I often have we often have that too. There are so many people where there is a there is a you know there are two folks right and maybe both of them maybe one's a teacher or one worked in public works or whatever right or one was in the private sector and one was a teacher. Can you just talk about that a little bit you know and how they could figure that out and whether Social Security can will will help you figure that out, or whether that's really a question that you have to go back and talk to the folks that you're getting the pension from. So I would actually speak with both entities, the people that you're getting the pension from and the Social Security Administration, because the rules for how your benefit from the Social Security Administration will be reduced can actually be a fairly complicated calculation. So generally speaking, if a person receives some sort of retirement or disability pension from a federal, state, or local government. And so your teacher example is perfect. This is what we see most often at community legal aids. Um, if that happens, Social Security may reduce a spouse's benefit, a widow or widower's benefit, or even your own benefit, depending on what's going on with that pension. And so we advise people to um, absolutely report that pension income to the Social Security Administration at the point that they're filing for benefits, because you don't want Social Security to find out later all this time you've been receiving a pension and they didn't know about it because it could be possible that they pay you too much in benefits and then come back to collect it later on. Um, but if you report that pension on time to Social Security, uh, they should be able to take that into consideration when they figure out your monthly benefit. Right. And remember, if that if that's what's happened, if you if Social Security has overpaid you, and are now trying to recoup benefits, they have an easy way of doing it. They just drop your payment, you know? So it isn't like, oh, you know, somehow I'm gonna skate free here, right? 
Um, because, you know, obviously folks are sometimes, well, sometimes you're just tempted to kind of not think about it and just take the check that's coming in and figure, oh, well, this is fine, right? But then, then the repercussions can be, can be, uh, can be severe. And especially for the lower income folks that my office sees, you know, the difference of 100 or 200 or your entire benefit per month can actually be life changing. Right. So it's important to number one, read those notices that come that say what they think the overpayment is and why. Okay. And number two, appeal it if you think the administration is wrong. And for those who may not be able to afford to pay it back or afford to pay it back in the amount that the administration is collecting it. It's possible to either ask the Social Security Administration to waive collection of that overpayment or to at least reduce how much they're taking back from your benefits each month. Right, right. So the bottom line is don't don't just get daunted by this. You know, talk, talk to somebody about it. Talk to somebody about it. Now, now before we before we started, I asked you about this one question that it tends to come up here. You know, so what about folks? who are now on SSDI, on Social Security Disability Income, because they had a disability, they had, you know, they, they couldn't work. And, and so how does, that, how does that segue into regular Social Security? The good news is for people who are on Social Security Disability Insurance, if they remain on it until their retirement age, their benefit's gonna simply switch over to retirement. There's nothing that they really need to focus on. Um, however, one thing to pay attention to is that um, if you're on Social Security Disability and you reach full retirement age, but you haven't yet hit the point on SSDI where you can qualify for Medicare, it's important to then sign up for Medicare once you've hit uh, age 65. And so, and so if you're on SSDI and then you get to full retirement age and you flip to the regular, the, 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 S the Social Security Administration is going to figure that out all for you. Right. They're going to take care of it for you. And they're um, going to just send you the correct check. And the check's going to change, obviously. They're going to send you the correct check, right? Um, so the Social Security Disability and the retirement check should be uh, the same amount. It's oh. just which the name of the benefit program that you're collecting under. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, 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 they, the, so there isn't like a recalculation at the point at which you're going on, into retirement um, um, using a different formula from the one that, that, that caused your, your SSDI payment to, to occur? So again, I'm never the one who actually calculates the benefits. I leave that up to the administration, but you can trust that whatever they are sending to you is gonna be correct, assuming they have the right information of what you have paid into the system all those years. And, and, and by the way, so for, for, for SSDI recipients, right? Can they um, collect early uh, on, can they start earlier than their retirement age, like 62? Um, oh, oh, sure. I mean, Social Security Disability Insurance is available to, um, to basically all adult ages. Um, and you can theoretically collect some disability benefits uh, by virtue of your relationship to your parents. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to point out is that there's there's another program we haven't talked about that may come into play for people on SSDI or people on retirement benefits, which is the Supplemental Security Income Program. Mm -hmm. This is a poverty-based program available to people who have disabilities or who are 65 and older that the Social Security Administration offers. And so if your income from one of those programs isn't quite high enough, SSI may be able to provide an extra contribution. And for those people who are living in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, there's a state program called the State Supplement Program that will give an additional SSI payments for people who are on SSI. So it's really important to ask at the Social Security Administration, is it possible for me to qualify for another benefit? And Social Security will look into all the benefits that you should apply for. And would that include the possible state benefit? Yes, if a person oh, qualifies great. for SSI, or is just over the income for SSI, yeah. Yeah. they'll still send your information over to the state and then the state yeah. will start calculating your state supplement program benefit. That's great. That's great. So I guess, you know, the kind of the, 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 the bottom line here, the takeaway here is check it out with the Social Security Administration, right? They, they are, and in my experience, they have the most friendly bureaucracy I have ever met, you know, you go to their office, you know, people are really well informed, really well trained, and, and they're really trying to help you out. They're not like trying to beat you away, you know, and, and, and if you've got any questions, 
talk to Rachel Brown. Ra Rachel, can 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 you just give us your your you know your contact information if people just had a general a question? Sure. So um, I'll give uh, community legal aids general information. That would be great. Yeah. Our easiest phone number is 855-252-5342, which is 855-CLA-LEGAL. Yeah. And we also have a website, uh, communitylegal.org. It's possible to apply online straight through that website or through the phone number. And we have a lot of information on our website about the various services we can provide. So we invite people to contact us. Rachel Brown, on behalf of myself, Frank and Mary, and all of the people who are watching, I really, really appreciate you taking the time. I hope this doesn't result in you're getting buried with more work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's really, it's really helpful for a whole lot of people. So thank you. It's been a pleasure to chat with you. Thanks.